All right, guys, we're back. Welcome back. You know, once in a while, I actually like to share parts of my story for, you know, I always say it's, it's not to, you know, glamorize what I did or how I lived. It's just now that I'm an adult and I think back and I look at all the dumb shit that I did, it's actually pretty funny. You know, I like to share parts of my story, you guys. I, I call it being selfish, you know, talking about myself. But um, sharing parts of my story of my life so you guys could, uh, you know, get a laugh, entertainment, um, learn from it, all the above, you know. And, and that's and that's the biggest thing about sharing with my videos with you guys. And, uh, yeah, this one is, um, let's get into this video. Cartel got me working for the big faces Federale got my car full of brick cases Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking Eyes picked to my back for my shoelaces God out, shoulda seen the look on they faces All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper Set up by the crew, they done put a banger In the trunk of my car and left me to hang there No thing, then attorney went and beat the case Got a job digging holes for minimum wage Had a dream that Cato said he proud of me Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing Quit the drugs, but you know I went back to selling Six times failing, I went back to prison Got my head right, got my bread right Push these weights like a kilo in a tailpipe Trying to do right, I got a mission Trying to get back to my boys in the prison The old me's gone, I ain't never gonna miss them From wrong to strong, stay true to the vision From wrong to, to strong From wrong to strong from wrong to, to strong From wrong to strong Hey, what's up guys? I like doing that. My name's JC and I am Wrong to Strong. If you are new to my channel, my shenanigans and all of the above crazy stuff that I talk about and say Subscribe, hit the bell, don't miss an episode. If you are part of my Ron and Strong family, what's up, Rasa? Subas a la suburban. Let's put some gas in this so we don't end up in the wrong neighborhood. And hopefully this week we'll save up enough money to put a tow truck bumper on that motherfucker so we can ram and jam. What's up, man? So today I'm gonna show share a part of my story with you guys uh as a kid um all my friends were already in the in the dope game way before me you know i started pretty young but a lot of my other friends were in it already because they had older brothers that were in the game already so you know uh my boy uh drac uh he must have been 14 when I first met him, and he was already selling weed because uh, his older brother was, you know, in the game. You know, he he always they always had, you know, stuff, and they were always, you know, dealing and, and making money. So, you know, it, it it was at that age where you know I wanted the nice gym shoes, I wanted the nice clothes, I wanted to get a car, and everything um, that everybody else was rocking, you know, and. Uh, it got to the point where I started to, to to want to do what I had to do to get those things. And I came up with this great idea one day. <laughs> and this is this is me being a young, irresponsible, immature kid that I mean as it was I already had a lot of issues a lot but it's crazy how my mind worked so right across from where we lived at right across the street there was a uh he was a local drug dealer but he wasn't like small stuff he actually was part of the family that i ended up working for later in the future it's, it's a it's a crazy story how everything happened Pretty much, um, I, I ended up bumping into him later in my life, and, and it was just, it was crazy because he ended up being the first per person to put me on the game, 
and uh, you know his family was uh, bringing stuff in from Mexico and uh, they used to do it in, in big slabs of cheese. I was young and responsible, I was immature, there, there was a lot of things wrong with me but I was very very smart when it came to when I knew somebody was up to no good. I don't know why, to this day still. Like I could read somebody really quick and, and, and that's the thing is that I, I know how to tell if, uh, yeah, if you're moving some shit. <laughs> so, you know, I started um, actually hanging out over there a lot, you know, cause he would uh, sit in front in his porch. In Chicago, a lot of the houses have porches in front, people sit in front on their, you know, cement stairs and it's a very different, it's like a neighborhood hangout, like people hang out in front of their houses and stuff like that. And he would always be out there drinking and, and with uh, all his friends, you know, bracelets, gold chains, nice cars, nice cowboy boots, uh, the whole nine yards, you know. And so I used to go over there a lot. And I knew as a kid that, you know, I had this gift where like people would take a liking to me. I've talked about it before in my videos. People would take a liking to me. I know how to win people over. You know, a lot of my friends tell me I should have been a, a politician because when I was doing time in prison, uh, I would go out to the yards and, you know, the Florida boys, the Washington boys, everybody would come up to me and talk to me, shake my hand. And it, it was just how I carried myself. But I would go over there every day. You know, I would run to the store for him. I, I would do little errands here and there. No drug dealing stuff, but just little errands. And I knew you know, that they were bringing in big shit. Like, I knew it, I read it, I smelt it, I seen it, you know, and, and, and the thing is, is that in those neighborhoods, you don't, you don't see people with like $70,000 cars or when you go into their house, they're, it's crazy because you'll see houses in Chicago that from the outside look completely run down, but then you walk in and it has like marble floors and Italian uh, in, the, in the kitchen and they're all completely redone, you know? So, you know, I would go into his house, see everything, see the jewelry, see everything. So I knew there was money there, you know, and I was young, I was young. I was, I want to say 13 and a half at the most. So I told my other friends that were a little bit older than me, uh, I think uh, Phil was 16 and uh, I want to say Johnny was, I want to say 17 because he's the one that had the car and I told him I was like I know this dude he's probably got like a lot of stuff in the basement uh, we just need to find it and and uh, you know you be the getaway car you come in with me and you know in my head I, I, I planned it out supposedly you know I, I seen it in the movies <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, I thought it was slick. <laughs> so I needed to find I needed to find a gun, and uh, I couldn't I couldn't find one. Uh, at the time, the neighborhood the neighborhood wasn't doing that good, so <laughs> I went I went over to uh, an old uh, friend of mine that had a, a old shotgun, and it was. Uh, one of those shotguns from like the 1950s that were like this long. And you know, the one that, uh, that Hunter tries to kill Bugs Bunny with. <laughs> and I was like, uh, you know, how am I gonna hide this? You know, and, 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 and try to like sneak up on this dude. So uh, I told my buddy, let's cut it. And in one of the movies, I seen the dude cutting it, you know, and, and we'll cut it. And the dude was like, no, you can't cut it. It's my grandma's shotgun, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, dude, after we do this job, we're gonna be rich. We'll buy her 10 shotguns. Don't worry about it. And me being as convincing as I am, I convinced them and we cut it, okay? Then I was like, where were the bullets at? Well, she, he's like, they've never had bullets for it. It's only been like there for like looks. <laughs> You know, I had to go to plant B. So, I took it with no bullets. <laughs> and thank God I did. You know, but we planned it out, right? 
we drive there. I was nervous. I've never done nothing like that before. <laughs> so, you know, uh, and being so young, man, I was, like I said, I, I think I was like 13 going on 14. I was, I was really young, small, little kid. We went to the, uh, to the store to get some uh, ski mask and I don't know why in my head, you know, I rolled up my ski mask to make me like fit like a skull cap, like a hat. And I knock on the door, right? My buddy had the same thing on like the same way. And my getaway driver is waiting in front. He opens the door and he's like, hey, hey, Julio. He knew me by my name. And I was like, what's up? I was like, Tienes mota? You know, can you give me some, some weed to smoke? Because he would always like give me like little stuff here and there. And he's like, yeah, come in, come in. So he opened up, the, he had a big metal metal gate. If you lived in the hood in Chicago, you know all the, in the neighborhoods, they have that big metal gate just in case Five Will tries to, you know, uh, uh, break in. They have to have a hard time taking the door down. But he opened up the gate, let me in. I don't know why in my head after he let me in and closed the door, did I pull down my skull cap into my ski mask and I covered my face. I guess he had, I mean, he had already seen me. But as soon as I did that, right, and I went to pull the shotgun out of my, my I had a trench coat on, pull it out, he grabbed the shotgun and started screaming in a way that I had, I had never heard a grown man scream like that in my whole life. I started screaming. It made me scared. And I was not as strong as him because he was pulling the shotgun from me, pulling it, pulling it, pulling it. And I was screaming and my buddy's just standing there like scared too. And finally, I don't know if it was just like the, 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 the how scared I was or whatever, I kicked him and he fell down the stairs, right? He, tussed, he fell down with the shotgun and all in my head, I was so panicking, I couldn't even open the doors. There was two locks, I couldn't open, I couldn't open. And all I was hearing in the back was him running back up the stairs. Well, when he ran up the stairs, I finally got the door open. Um, I turned around and grabbed my beeper and I pretended like I had a gun. And he got scared, so he, he, he stopped on the stairs. And then we ran out. Well, we were so scared that the getaway car was waiting for us right up front. We didn't even jump in. Like, it, it looked like a scene from a cartoon. I'm not gonna lie. Like, we were running down the street and the getaway car was following us. <laughs> he picked us up like six blocks down. <laughs> and, you know, uh, if that shotgun would have had bullets in it, he actually uh, shot at us right where we were jumping down the stairs from his house, from the steps. So he would actually, he would actually have shot us with, with our, you know, with the gun, if it would have had uh, bullets in it. And um, yeah, you know, I got away, shit in my pants. Uh, you know, I decided uh, that that whole robbing drug dealer thing was not for me. <laughs> you know, it's, it takes, it takes a special kind of person to go into a house and be in enemy territory and, you know, want to take stuff. Like, it, it, you know, I, I met this, uh, this GD where I was doing state time in Illinois and, you know, I told him that story and he started cracking up because that's what, that's what he did for a living. You know, he robbed people and you know, he, he told me, he's like, dude, when you do that, when you rob somebody, the first thing you got to do as soon as you fucking get in their face is just smack the shit out of them with the gun. Pretty much knock their teeth out so they know that you mean business. And I was like, man, you know, I'm, I'm cold hearted, but I ain't that cold hearted. So I, I think it, it takes a, a, a special kind of person to do stuff like that. Just like I say in my other videos, man. There's people that actually deserve to be in prison. Like, they need to stay there. They, they don't need to be released. You know, and there's people that have just made dumb, 
stupid decisions because of I don't know necessity or who they're hanging around with or just just being fucking dumb you know this is why like I like to share my stories it's it, you know my, my life is tied into a lot of things you know the gangs the cartels in Mexico all the prisons I went to you know state federal California Florida Illinois Oklahoma you name it but the main purpose at the end of this whole shenanigan, this whole channel, everything is, you know, change. Some of, some of those kids don't know what it is to change or don't know where to start. They don't know how, you know, sobriety works. They don't know how just leaving the neighborhood feels like because it's, I, I know what it felt like. Every time I got out of prison, I went straight to my neighborhood. Like, I didn't know nothing more. I didn't know nothing better. I, it's all I knew. And the first day out, I would be in my neighborhood. And then three months later, I would be back in prison. Because it's all I knew. And I was scared, actually, of change. And that's the thing, man. My, my channel is about change. It's from wrong to strong. Because it's really easy to do what's wrong. It's hard to actually do what's right. And with that, you know, you build strength just like in the gym. You got to be in there every day, lift, eat. You got to do every day what you have to do to do what you do. Right? All right. My name is JC. I am Wrong Strong. Don't judge nobody. Give somebody a hug. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, you only have one life to live. But if you live it right, one life is all you need. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.